folks, my opinion about this whole thing is it's a sad situation. The American government and turns around and ignores the voter. Watch this video and tell Hundreds me if you're not blood doesn't many boil. Are stranded on the interstate in freezing cold, trapped for almost 24 hours with no way out. After the region was slammed with a major snowstorm and a tractor trailer pileup shut down the always busy highway. A desperate situation for many folks running out of essentials, gas, food, water, some saving themselves, get this, by ordering DoorDash. Rescue efforts underway all day today, stranded passengers struggling desperately to get by. People, they don't have no water, no food. They've been there for more than 24 hours sitting there. So hopefully they get they get this thing moving. It's freezing out here. It's freezing out here and there's total standstill. You're trying to stay warm, but you're running out of gas. God bless the truck drivers because Virginia certainly didn't help much. And now comes the inevitable blame game. Some liberals on social media actually blaming Virginia's Republican governor elect Glenn Youngkin for the ongoing humanitarian crisis now. But Youngkin hasn't even been sworn in yet. That happens on the 15th. So, Dana, listen to this one from uh, from Rufus. Glenn Youngkin is hard at work trying to get rid of critical race theory out of Virginia schools. Who gives a damn about a few thousand people freezing to death on I-95? So they're blaming uh, the Republican uh, who hasn't it, it, taken office and won't until the 15th of January. Well, Rufus is a doofus. I mean, this oh, nice. is obviously not any one particular person's problem, but when you have this many people on the road for that long, we talked to a truck driver this morning. Her name is Emily Clemenson. She'd been, on the, she'd been out there for like 18 hours or something. And she was noticing on Twitter people didn't have food and water, so she's reaching out to everybody on Twitter saying, check with the truck drivers because we always have extra. And she, we asked her at 9.30 in the morning, do you see any signs that the government is doing anything at the state level to help? She said there was nothing on the emergency channel on the CB radio. And yeah. seen anything? There's just nothing. So uh, Governor Northam is probably counting the days until this is no longer his job, not Youngkin's yet. I want to point out one thing that I do not believe has been said yet. Uh, I talked to a state legislator there in Virginia, and he pointed out to me that in the last several years, many on the left made a decision that local sheriffs should not be allowed to have military-grade equipment. Mm. Right. Because they said that that was a bad symbol and that it was uh, too militaristic and authoritarian. But imagine if they had, were still allowed to have the equipment that they had just a few years ago, it probably would have come in very helpful today. I, I, I agree with that. I, I don't know where Northam was. But he certainly was no dynamo, uh, Greg. He was, uh, I mean, I, I, could, I can envision a, an activist governor getting in a snowmobile, uh, you know, towing uh, hot cocoa to people. Uh, the truck drivers are saying there was nothing, nothing between 1 in the morning and 7.30 uh, in the morning. There was a, not a single emergency vehicle on the road in these, with these stranded people, Greg. Yeah, I'm shocked he wasn't there because he's such a fan of the color white. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, got that. Yes, uh, this is my... <laughs> but it's a, that's a real stretch, though. It's a real stretch. He's referring what? to the blackface memory. Yeah, well, he uh, said We he don't was know sorry. he was in blackface. He could have been in the KKK hood. We never got closure on that, Geraldo. And frankly, I think we should okay. find that out. Um, everybody's also talking about the vice president candidate, uh, what's his name, Tim Kaine? Stuck yeah. in the car for 20 hours. People feel bad for him. No, 20 feel, hours, yeah. Yeah, feel bad for the people that were in the car with him. That's a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Seasoned travelers know this. If you're going any place further out than comfortable walking distance, you got to have a lot of crap in your trunk. I always have a wool blanket, a case of water. I got some old sweaters, a coat, some protein bars. And very important, if you have a pet, make sure it's a pet you can eat yeah. in case it comes down to oh, that. Because you that. don't want the reverse. You don't want the pet to eat you. You yeah. are in control of the situation Eat the pet. You also need children's Tylenol. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. Let's not make Jesse. that a thing. <laughs> cool. Jesse, where did they go to the bathroom, Jesse? Mm. Uh, they made some you yellow really snow, Geraldo. What do I care? Here's the deal. <laughs> you can't rely on the government to save you. If you're waiting around and that's your plan for the government to rescue you from a snowstorm, you need a new plan. The government doesn't have, like, you know, 
an Olympic mm -hmm. cross country ski team? <laughs> or are they going to have like a department of toboggans to come out with those Arctic dogs with, you know, like that miniature like barrel with the warm red liquid medicine that drips out? No. Two like, kind of dogs. I, Glenn Youngkin wouldn't have done any better. I mean, what is he going to do? Give everybody one of his vests? <laughs> this, they have problems plowing snow, Geraldo, in Massachusetts. This is Virginia. Right. They are up against the wall. They does, couldn't yeah, even right. save the Virginia, Virginia senator. Virginia. Uh, so, Geraldo, you so don't think judge, the Virginia senator made here. a few calls? If they can't save a senator in Virginia, how are they going to save right. the country <laughs> from global warming? Good point. So here's Republican Governor Youngkin in the I-95 mega disaster. 48 miles shutdown for hours and hours in Virginia. He's nowhere to be found, Governor Youngkin. This never happened under Democratic Governor Northam, or any other governor for that matter's shame. So, Judge, they have no clue. Social media well, has no first clue. Well, first of all, you know, first of all, it is funny. I'm from upstate New York. I mean, I'm used to the cold. You always have stuff in your car. But you know what's not funny? People in the freezing cold running out of gas with no food, clearly getting sick, and a, a, a governor, Northam, who's, you know, should have been thrown out if the rules were equal for everyone else, who's not doing anything. And I don't believe for one second that there's nothing they can do. I mean, they've got helicopters. They should have been coming out with food. They should have been there for kids, whether it's a pregnant woman, whatever. And the, and the voters and the taxpayers should, should the be— in, uh, Wait a minute. They should have been, they should be infuriated. We have a right to expect our government to come through in emergencies like this. They knew that th this should have been closed. I-95 should have been closed. There wouldn't have been these jackknife uh, semi-trailers uh, semi and, and uh, all the other problems that caused this. And it's their fault. Up next, up next, Judge. President Biden getting slammed as clueless for what he just said about inflation, soaring prices, and big meat. We're not even going to go there, folks.